Maybe those aren't sharks. Those aren't sharks. If there's one thing I've learned, you can't give up on family. Up. For people that don't know, where is Percy at in this follow-up film? He's kind of down. He's not the star uh, leader of the camp anymore because Clarice has um, come in and sort of taken that title away from him. And she's extremely competitive and he kind of thinks in his mind that he's not as good as her and he's defeated himself and she definitely wants to keep him down. But his destiny and his calling and, and uh, kind of leads him... Um, a different way. Uh, well, Percy's not the hero anymore at the beginning of this film. He's been um, he's been one up by Clarice, who's an, um, another uh, another half blood at the camp, and he's just like uh, accepting uh, the the average demigod life, and just he thinks of himself as being like a one hit wonder. He's a little insecure, and then on top of that, he finds out that he has a half brother and that he's like doesn't really want to accept into his into his uh, his family, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so that's where we find him, and then he's thrust into this, you know, crazy adventure to uh, find the Golden Fleece in the in the Sea of Monsters and save his camp. So, uh, yeah, he's got to find his confidence again. The only thing that has the power to save our home is the Golden Fleece. It's in the Sea of Monsters, but the humans called the Bermuda Triangle. Our quest calls for only our finest hero, the best of us. The daughter of the god of war, Clarice! Don't worry about always coming in second, Jackson. You know, everything they say about you is wrong, Clarice. You actually do have a sense of humor. And I love that you're playing another hardcore, badass, I don't know if I can say that, <laughs> character. Yeah. Um, there's some great action in this movie from what I've seen. What are those scenes like to shoot? Is there a lot of choreography? I would imagine. Yeah, we, so. had, we had fight training together, actually. That's right, yeah. And she kept hitting me in the... <laughs> she, she, she kept I had like this weapon and I, yeah, I would practice on him. She somebody duck, I'm like, yeah, I, when are you going to say duck? Like, cause she was, you know, oh yeah, I did, I, a few times, so yeah. So good time. I made you, uh, kept you on your toes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we, we did have uh, pretty extensive, you and I especially, mm -hmm. well, I guess we all did, but uh, fight choreography for these really great battle scenes um, and with like Luke's cr uh, goonies or whatever. Um, so yeah, th it was it was, a de it was an aspect that keeps you involved like physically in all the, the time. You yeah, be, like, you have mentally to, connected. Yeah. Otherwise, you might get hurt. Watch yeah. out. I'm so curious to hear more about your approach. I know you sort of told the audience this morning a little bit about why you wanted to sign on to the movie. Yeah, but I'd love to hear more from you. I wanted to sign on to the movie because I felt it had all the ingredients that I love in a kind of action adventure story, having to do mostly with the way characters are treated and what the tone of the book series is, which is, it's very funny, it's kind of irreverent, it doesn't take itself all that seriously always, but never at the cost of sort of the central emotional theme of, you know, a bunch of kids who, you know, have parents who are much larger than life and mostly feel abandoned by them. So I thought there was a lot of um, emotionality and a central theme that really appealed to me to be mine from that, but also at the same time be light and, you know, um, funny and irreverent. And I know that something different we're gonna see this time around is 3D, which yes. we love. And I also talked to Alexandra a few months ago and she mentioned that her hair color was gonna be blonde. What yes. other sorts of differences will we see in the sequel? Um, well, the her hair color is yes. one. Um, it is in 3D, which makes the movie a hell lot more immersive, I think, and you know the the action adventure genre uh, lends itself to that really well. We expand greatly on the world. I mean, not only do we expand Camp Half Blood from what it was in the first movie, uh, but we go out to sea, we go into caves, onto islands, and things like that. Um, shooting this movie really was never a dull moment because 
it felt like we were, you know, thrown into different circumstances every week, whether it was on the water, on a stage, in the city, you know, in the woods. Um, it was very exciting. Did you approach the project differently knowing that it would be in the third dimension? No, I mean, you know, I mean, we found out it was going to be 3D like halfway through shooting. And then I was like, okay, that's cool. Yeah, but it didn't really, it didn't really change my approach to how I'm gonna act. Like, I'm, I didn't like decide to move closer to camera at times and stuff like that. It just punched the lens. <laughs> um, no, no, it, it didn't really change, you know, my process at all. But it definitely uh, added another layer to make this movie cooler. You know? We will resurrect Kronos, and the Olympians will know death. Percy! We really need your help, and we don't have a lot of time. You twist the cap off this, you release the wings from the four corners of the world. Whoa, 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 no, not in here. Not in here? We'll find the fleece. So time to go. Tell me those aren't sharks. Those aren't sharks.